Hey, do you need to figure out how the three bill material imports really work in Fusion? Coming up. Hey, Tyler Beck. I'm a technical marketing manager here at Autodesk. We're talking about importing data into Fusion Lifecycle. This is something that everyone should be comfortable doing. This is the fastest way to remove data, to clean it up, and to modify it. So let's get into importing bill material. So when you go to your import, you're going to see three options. First, you select where it's going, of course, which workspace you're working with. So for bill materials, you actually have three options, parent-child bomb, hierarchy bomb, and level bomb. So which one is best? Which one should you use? How do they work? Well, I think it'd be easiest if we look at the spreadsheet set up ready to import. So let's open that. So we'll first begin with our level bomb. And as you can see, it's laid out pretty similarly. So here's my level bomb. I have my first line item. I have a part number. It's at level one, quantity. It's the top level. I'll then be dropping in um, an assembly and sub-assemblies beneath it, maybe some sub-components. OK, so as I add in the next component, I give it the component number. I'm going to give it its description how many there are, and this starts at level two. So if I were to add another component at this same level, then it would be level two. But what I want to do is I'm going to add a component underneath this subassembly, and it's the first component. It's part one. There's four of them. It's on level three. So if I want any more components underneath this subassembly here, then they would live on level three. Let's add two more. OK, adding these down below, I've added component part two and part three. You can see their quantities and their corresponding level. These all live at the same level, level three, underneath this subassembly that happens to be above it at level two. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Just be careful that you can reorganize how those components sit. So if I were to reorder component part one, two, and three, in theory, they could be out of order and still be on level three. That's one gotcha to be aware of. Next, let's talk about the hierarchy bill of materials, that example. So here I have, it's laid out almost identically to our level bomb. In this tab, instead of level, I have hierarchy, and I'm beginning with one. Adding this next component, I see that it's the next component number, but the hierarchy gets a 1.1. 1 .1. So I'm starting to see a pattern already. 1 and then to 1.1. I'm guessing that if I went to a subcomponent under sublevel, it would probably be something like 1.1.1, right? OK, so let's add some components underneath this sublevel. So as I add these in, I can see that it goes 1.1.1 1 .1 and then 0.2.3. So you can see the pattern here. So if I wanted to add more components or maybe a different subassembly at this sublevel, I could do that. I might do it with the 1.2.1, and that would be another series of components. I've updated the dates. I've adjusted my part numbers so that they're correct. Let's, let's see how this thing imports in Diffusion Lifecycle. It's a hierarchy bomb. I choose the file. I'll give it a name and a description. Create new. Okay, once it's ready, I'll then fill out the parameters on the import. I can see that the column needs to be selected for hierarchy. It's prompting me to tell it which is the key. So I find hierarchy here, go to the pull down, choose matches bomb, hierarchy key. Then I'm sure to align any other properties against my import. Hit save. And make sure that my parameters are set for adding to the workspace. One thing I forgot to do, I'm sure to match my part number so that they are the unique identifier. Hit save. I notice that I only have warnings that it will not be edited. I hit Run, creating five new records. 
Okay, let's go check in the bill of materials to see if these things came in and the structure looks correct. Okay, let's, now that we're looking for it, I'll go to items and bombs. And what I'd like to do first is I'm gonna actually create a new reporting, a new filter to understand my new updates. Looks like I already have one, I'll edit that one. Make sure that it's telling me the number. And there we go, these will give me the new updates of any new part numbers in the system. So when I create these new updates, I'm actually gonna filter it though. I'll create filter by when it was created. We'll save it. And so this will give me any new updates for this week. And there are my new parts. There they are. Okay, so here's the structure. I can see the top level, this subassembly, excuse me, this subassembly and its subcomponents. That looks good. So it worked, great. Okay, so now for that third option, let's run through the parent child. Okay, uh, the bill of materials is laid out pretty much the same way. Where you're gonna notice the difference is where it's listed the parent and the child. You'll need to designate that for its own column. So adding in the next level, I add in this new component number I'm sure to call out the parent. The parent is this upper level number. This is this first subassembly, and then we'll add in its subcomponents. Okay, so now that I'm adding in these subcomponents, you'll notice it's component part one, two, and three. There's the corresponding part number. But where this is different is you're calling out the parent. So I find this one to be maybe the most tedious when laying out the structure. I think it's pretty easy to follow. It requires a bit more effort where you've got to call out the parent on each one. So each of these subcomponents for the subassembly, they all have the same parent, so they're gonna have the same number. The subassembly calls out to the top level, which that is its parent. So pretty easy to follow these out. Again, you have to designate these. When you do your import, you wanna call out the parent-child column and be sure to match on your unique identifier like your part number. So my question for you today, which types of imports are you doing? Where are you coming from? What other systems are you typically using with Fusion Lifecycle? I'd love to hear that from you guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to watch the rest of the videos in this series that I'm creating that are gonna be in the playlist that I'll show. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. That'll be explaining how you use bill materials within the Fusion platform. Be sure to watch that next video.